What's up guys, Miss Pass here back with another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes commentary video. I am jumping back into my roster review series. I had a little bit of a slump there, not really posting a whole lot. I kind of had to catch up on everything after EA Play, but roster review series is back up and running with Asajj Ventress. That's right, Asajj is getting some more love. I had already done an Asajj review, however that was about a year ago, so we're rehitting Asajj here and it is well overdue because Asajj is one of the unsung heroes of Galaxy of Heroes. I believe she is a huge huge potential if she were to just get a little bit of a rework hashtag make Asajj great again as far as mods go obviously you want to put speed on her these mods are just kind of offsets they didn't really have a home uh, so I just kind of threw them on her but they do have a little bit of speed secondaries and obviously a 30 speed arrow tenacity I think is a set that works well on a lot of characters that you don't want to get ability blocked however I think tenacity is broken in the game but tenacity is not a bad set potency and crit chance I believe are most applicable and most beneficial to Asajj because she does the most damage when she's landing crit strikes as you'll see later in the video as far as stats go she has very low health very low protection which I think is very lacking now, granted, you did see a lot of applicable or a lot of gear that I could equip at gear 11. So um, some of those stats do get made up a little bit in with the gear at a gear 11. Her speed is very low. She's one of the slowest characters in the game. That's why you want to stack speed on her. Her potency is pretty good all right off the bat. And her health steal is amazing. 50% health steal is incredible, which I think could really be utilized better if they were to give her a little bit of a rework. Her basic attack is called Cruel Strike. It deals physical damage to a target enemy with a 35% chance to stun for one turn. If I were to buff Asajj, I would increase that 35% chance to at least a 50. I mean, come on. Asajj's first special ability is called Strike Fear, and it dispels all positive status effects from all enemies, and Asajj recovers 40% of her max health. For each effect dispelled this way, Asajj recovers an additional 9% max health and has a 50% chance to remove 10% turn meter. Now, this is the ability that I think needs the most attention. And we will talk about this later in the video. Her other special ability is called Endless Wrath, and it deals special damage to all enemies and refreshes all cooldowns on a finishing blow. Note the difference here that this uses special damage while her basic uses physical damage. The majority of characters in the game use physical or special damage, and rarely do two of their abilities use uh, different types of damage rating. Now, when a, an ability says it uses physical damage or deals physical damage, it means that it uses your the physical damage value of their um, character statistics. If an ability says it uses does special damage, obviously it uses the special damage factor here. So that is the base number that the damage multiplier of the ability is using. Now, it is important, yes, that the ability that is supposed to be landing the killing blows deals damage based off of the higher damage value. However, the crit ratings for her special versus physical are vastly different. So that's where I think it is a little bit of a slight to be using her uh, rather special damage for her AoE that's supposed to be landing killing blows. Not to mention the fact that even at gear 11, granted I'm still missing a lot of gear here, she's not landing f killing blows when she's critting for, you know, five, six, seven thousand damage. That's that's small potatoes in the grand scheme of all the characters right now in the game dealing tens of, of thousands of damage with their AoE ability, so I think that ability really needs a damage tweak. Her leader ability is Night Sister Swiftness. This ability also just it needs a tweak. It's uh, yeah, it's got a Zeta and it's kind of a soft Vader Zeta sort of ability. It's got that feel to it, but it reads Night Sister allies gain 28 speed, gain 50% turn meter whenever they fall below 100% health, and have a 50% chance to remove 20% turn meter when they damage an enemy. This turn meter reduction cannot be resisted. And that last little bit of turn meter removal is where I kind of say that it's kind of a Darth Vader style Zeta. However, it only applies to Night Sisters. It's kind of just. I, I feel like there's a lot of potential here with this leader ability. 
that should be make should make it worthy of a Zeta. I mean, who's going to put a Zeta on an ability to improve the speed of only their Night Sisters? Let's list off on two fingers how many good Night Sisters there are in the game: Asajj Ventress and Old Daka. Until they add Mother Talzin, this ability is useless. Until they work it to be Night Sisters and Separatists. Asajj's unique ability is called Rampage. Whenever an ally or enemy is defeated, Asajj Ventress gains offense up and crit chance up for two actions and gains 50% turn meter. Asajj Ventress gains 15 speed for each enemy without a buff. Now this is with the Zeta. If you snap back to level 7, with the, which is without the Zeta, it is only a 25% chance to gain 35% turn meter. Oh, and the uh, offense up and crit chance only lasts for one turn instead of two. So she still gains the speed without the Zeta, she just doesn't gain the guaranteed turn meter, and she doesn't gain the buffs for two turns. The two turn buffs is nice, however, it's not It's not something that's really worth a Zeta. And the 100% chance to gain 50% turn meter is nice, but then again, it's only when an ally or enemy is killed, which, I mean, I don't know, I guess... In a, in a perfect scenario, you're only going to have that happen four times before the match is over. Now, granted, in Galactic War, it'll be kind of like having Sidious gain that 50% turn meter, and, you know, he gets it. It kind of preps him up for the next battle, but I feel like Sidious gets so much more out of his unique Zeta, and this is almost like Sidious Zeta, you know, increasing the turn meter chance to 100%, get, upping it to 50%. Um, however, with this current state of the game where everybody always has a buff, she's never going to get that speed, or she gets that speed very, very, very rarely. And with her low, low speed to begin with, that 15 speed is kind of crummy when you think about, like, Kylo Ren, who gets 10 speed for every negative status effect that he has on him, and he has a negative status effect almost all the time with the, you know, giving himself damage over time. So I feel like this should just be an Omega upgrade. I mean, really, in the grand scheme of things. It, it just... She needs a rework because it seems like this upgrade was kind of a cop-out and kind of lazy. Uh, no offense. <laughs> uh, I just want to see Asajj great again. <laughs> so, gear that she needs at 11 is the Mark IV hollow projector, which obviously full stun cuff needed there. She needs two of the biotech implants that give her a lot of strength, which is going to be a lot of health. Plus, she gets this shield generator, which also gives her a lot more strength. So, if you take her to full gear max, which I wholeheartedly plan on doing eventually here, she gets so much more health. Um, so that is definitely something to think about. And she also gets a little bit more special damage. So it only increases the damage of her AoE just a little bit more, which, you know, maybe if they're going to use her special damage so much and make it so high maybe they need to go ahead and make her basic use special damage and just go ahead and translate that physical crit chance rating over to her special crit chance rating because she really relies on crits i mean you can see there she kind of only she doesn't hit very hard especially when she's her own leader which brings me to buffing her leader again it needs to be stronger than just speed and turn meter removal for night sister allies she doesn't do a lot of a whole lot of damage and neither do the rest of the night sisters you know i mean you've got empire who hits so hard and then you've got darth vader's leader ability gives everybody offense so um i think if you're going to just make it a vader clone just make it a vader clone and stop lying to yourself otherwise it just needs a complete rework and i think that she needs to have some kind of incredible separatist synergy going on so, needless to say, her leader ability right now, I'd say even if I had the Zeta, completely useless. 
probably right up there with Chewbacca in the order of useless Zetas in the game. So, I it, it pains me to say this, but Asajj Ventress seriously, seriously needs a rework because her leader ability is so bad. It's just, I mean, there are so much better options out there. In fact, uh, I'm going to show you the next uh, battle here in a second where I swapped up to a Boba Fett lead and man oh man it is like night and day difference and you can tell that even though she's super slow that unique Zeta on her would probably only be useful about half the time especially when you're doing your galactic war and you're killing things so fast that uh, she doesn't get more than one turn between each person dying. So I actually really had a lot of fun with this squad. Uh, I got to use my uh, Fulcrum Ahsoka, which, you know, if you're going to throw the Zeta on her and take her to Gear Max, you may as well use her, right? So talking about her special ability, that uh, the buff removal, this is the ability that I think really needs the biggest overhaul. First off, she's an, a support character. Yes, she supports her squad by removing buffs from the other team. However, that doesn't do anything for the team around her. And if you watch the Clone Wars, you know that Ahsoka, or sorry, Ahsoka, talking about Ahsoka here, uh, you know that Asajj Ventress was a, she was a team leader. She led droids, droid armies into battle. She wasn't exactly just a loner, you know what I mean? So I think what this ability needs to do is it needs to have some means of buffing her squad in return. Uh, maybe make it a, okay, so for every, if, if she removes one to two buffs then everybody on her squad gets x buff for one or two turns if she removes three to four buffs from the enemy squad then everyone on her squad gets one buff two buffs whatever for one or two turns and then if she removes five or more buffs then give it like the grand mac daddy buff to every person on her squad or everybody gets three buffs or whatever they need to do i think she needs to have some way of not just stripping buffs from the enemy because she, number one she's slow very slow and the only way to speed her up is to remove the buffs from the enemy squad and or kill members of the enemy squad to get her turn meter which even without the zeta is not that reliable so there needs to be a little bit more than just oh she heals herself for just a little bit i mean even if they reverted asajj ventress now this is you know you've been playing a long time if you remember when asajj ventress healed everybody on her squad not just herself but they quote unquote fixed the glitch to make I guess it wasn't working as intended. To me, that seemed kind of messed up because she was one of, at the time, only three dark side healers in the game, and then they took away her team healing ability because it wasn't working as intended. So that was a little frustrating for me because that's one of the reasons I um, farmed Asajj in the first place was because I didn't have a dark side healer, and then they fixed her and then she wasn't as good she's still good really good she does deals quite a bit of damage for the character type she is the class she is and all of her stats in taken into consideration which uh that's another thing is i would really like to see asajj have a little bit more health early on low at, at her lower levels i don't feel like you should have to take her up to gear tier 11 in order to have and not so squishy as Saj. I don't know. And then that's the other thing is okay, I understand she's squishy. So give her a counter attack, you know, fix her unique Zeta to not just give her a uh, 100% chance to gain 50% turn meter whenever an enemy dies. Uh, maybe give her retribution with that offense up and crit chance up. You know, make use of the fact that she has 
that really, really, really good. I mean, 50% health steal is some the best health steal in the game. Nobody has higher than 50% health steal. And even then, it's only a couple characters have 50% health steal. I know Asajj is one, and I don't quite remember right off the top of my head who the other one is, but I know that there's at least one other character with 50% health steal. But that is you know, something that she needs to have. She needs to have the ability to counterattack, which also brings me to another point. We need a good separatist synergy leader. We do not have any player or character in the game that has a, a separatist leader ability, a, a dedicated separatist leader ability. So I think that is something that Asajj could possibly fill that gap. And if not Asajj, then maybe someone like Newt. I don't want to go off onto my Newt tangent because when they nerfed Newt the second time, it was kind of just like, it It really irritated me quite a bit. Uh, all the other guys uh, know what I'm talking about. Bruh, chill. <laughs> um, so at any rate, so... I think that we need a good Separatist leader in the game. There are a good number of characters who have the potential to fill that niche, fill that void. Um, I think Newt, Asajj, um, really Count Dooku's leader ability could be tweaked just a little bit. You know, we're past the point of really enjoying a an evasion meta, so maybe uh, Count Dooku's leader ability, I don't know, but you know, the Sith already got a pass. Mother Talzin still needs to be introduced to the game. So I feel like, you know, the Night Sisters might not see their rework until Mother Talzin gets introduced. At which point, um, get your Night Sisters ready for Mother Talzin's arrival. Because if you've watched The Clone Wars, she was, she was the one Night Sister who scared the crap out of Sidious. She. Man, I'm telling you, if you know anything, if you follow like Dash Star or Star Wars Explained or any of those really, really, really knowledgeable Star Wars guys, they will tell you Mother Talzin was legit. She was powerful beyond like anyone in the Star Wars universe during the Clone Wars. She rivaled Emperor Palpatine if that gives you any measure of her power. So I think when Mother Talzin comes to the game, she may be introduced as a legendary. That's just my hypothetical thinking here. I, I would like to see her introduced as a legendary because she has that legendary capability feel to her. And if they don't release her as a legendary, I feel like even if she's released in the same manner as, say, Darth Nihilus, I feel like she definitely has the kind of potential to be a game changer or should be a game changer like Darth Nihilus was. So, um, Night Sisters, I believe, will have their day in the limelight. Uh, it may not be very long lived because, let's face it, there are five Night Sisters. Uh, and if they did introduce Mother Talzin, that'll only be six. So, uh, you know, I really want Asajj to really get her uh, her day in the sun. I really I've been asking for an Asajj rework for over a year now. So hopefully this video reaches some devs' ears. Hashtag make Asajj great again. That about wraps it up, guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you missed my last roster review video, click the annotation on screen to be taken to that one. As always, guys, like, favorite, subscribe, follow me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, join my Discord server to continue the conversation, and I will catch you next time.